Doctor, let, let's talk about heart disease. Uh, how does inflammation play a role in heart disease? Inflammation is the hallmark of every chronic illness. Mm -hmm. And it obviously plays a big part in, in, in heart disease. And we know one of the best markers for heart disease as a predictive value, as a diagnostic, as a prognostic, is C-reactive protein, mm -hmm. which is a marker for, for chronic inflammation. So if we can decrease inflammation, we will prevent the t deterioration of heart disease, if it's disease of the heart itself, or arteriosclerosis and coronary artery disease, or cardiovascular health, you know, strokes, peripheral artery disease. But it's easier said than done, because inflammation is not a cause. Inflammation is a manifestation of multiple factors, emotional stress, you know, lack of sleep, mm -hmm. inappropriate diet, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, hypertension, toxins, heavy metals, pesticides, you know, side effects from drugs, all of them can affect inflammation. So if we can understand better inflammation, we can understand better how to prevent and treat heart disease and actually my specialty is, is in cancer, which is qu quite challenging, mm -hmm. but when I treat patients with heart disease, it's surprising for me how easy it is to actually get them better, when you really understand all of these factors and all, and all of these elements. And one of the big things that now, the big light bulb that came up, especially in 2010 to, and 2011, that I was involved with, with the initial discovery and theoretical, you know, extrapolation that it may happen is uh, the research on galactin-3. Hmm. you talk a little bit more about that? I know uh, that's something that, uh, that you study quite a bit of. Talk about the importance of that and, and what some of the new research is, is finding. Galactin-3 is, is, a, is, a, is a combination of a protein, a lectin, and galacturonic acid, a sugar. And it's an active biomarker. It's in, we know the role of galactin-3 in cancer. Mm -hmm. My work with MCP relates to galactin-3. Galactin-3 in cancer causes cell-to-cell -cell adhesion, cells touching each other, causes angiogenesis, and causes also the ability of, of, of the metastasis to spread. So if we can block the galactin-3, we have an effective and important treatment for the primary tumor and for metastasis. And as I, I was giving a lecture yesterday, and, and I said from my philosophical mind-body perspective, as part of my lifestyle and my philosophy, it's important not to get attached to something that you discover and work with. So it's great that MCP, modified citrus pectin, has such a big role, but the other thing that are very important, and I didn't overemphasize it in my medical practice with myself and with my patients, mm -hmm. but with the latest research on galactin-3, I strongly feel that modified citrus pectin and the understanding of galactin-3 is one of the most important supplements, and for many people, modified citrus pectin is the most important supplement. And now I'm going to go back to galactin-3 mm -hmm. and explain why. We know that galactin-3 is, is, is an active biomarker, is in charge of regulation of injury and repair. And as such, it causes inflammation and fibrosis. We all have a little bit of galactin-3 in the body for normal repair of tissue, but as we age, or as we get different traumas, physical, emotional, accident, diseases, infections, cancer, there is a spike in production of galactin-3 inside the cell, in the nucleus, in the mitochondria, on the membrane, and then it gets shedded into the bloodstream. This galactin-3 causes excessive inflammation and fibrosis. To give you a sense how dramatic it is, there is a peer review paper this year published on galactin-3 in average every 36 hours. That's how hot is this topic. Mm. Even since we, we, know, we, 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 we spoke last a few months ago. Mm -hmm. So this is really moving to a place where by next year there will be a new category of illnesses called high galactin-3 diseases. Mm. So the beauty of it is yes, there's the bad news that galactin-3 causes inflammation and fibrosis that affects cancer, both the occurrence of cancer and cancer being more aggressive, affects cardiovascular disease. Patient with progressive heart failure, if the galactin-3 is under 17.8, 12.5% will die in one year. If it's over 
36% will die. If you look at the general population, where the average is around the age of 50 is 11.9, at 7.7, 5% will die from all causes in 11 years. 15% will die if they are at 15.6. Such a difference. Mm -hmm. So how do we address this rise in galactin-3? By addressing inflammation, through changes in lifestyle. But also specifically, the only proven natural binder and inhibitor and blocker of galactin-3 is modified citrus pectin. The specific one that, that, that I developed, you know, it's a generic term, mm. modified citrus pectin. So it, it's just amazing. All this research is coming at the same time about the role of galactin-3. Wonderful in vivo studies are coming showing that MD, MCP is indeed an effective blocker of galactin-3 and reduces inflammation. And the FDA just approved a blood test for galactin-3 as a screening for progressive heart failure, paid by all insurances now. So mm -hmm. it's a very unique, I think it's an unparalleled example where natural medicine made from the peel of the citrus fruit and the most sophisticated, you know, bio, biochemical and molecular biology studies of certain molecules like, like galactin-3 and the FDA approving a, a lab test it's all coming together in this example. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of excited to be in the center and the forefront yeah. of this mix. And uh, in fact, if I can just add one thing that I'm, I'm disclosing today because I filed my patent yesterday, is that I think that I've come with a new idea how to treat all of, this, all of these conditions. Because, uh, uh, yeah, because just giving drugs is not, is not going to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. But maybe on second thought, I may want to publish a peer review paper before I go, <laughs> I go on the air and, <laughs> and say what it is. Because I think it's a new therapy that can really turn around many, mm -hmm. many illnesses as an adjuvant. I always look for things that are adjuvants. By going back to your inflammation and heart disease, it will really help inflammation and heart disease. You talk about that test for galactin-3. Is it, is it a good thing for, for people to get that? And, and at what stage in life should they be looking at that? I think anybody from age 40 on should be screened for galactin-3. And I think anyone should take, everybody of age 40 or more should take modified citrus pectin five grams a day. Just because of the role in immunity, mm -hmm. in cancer, in, uh, in, in inclination of heavy metals, and now with inflammation that we know. Because as we age, the levels of galactin-3 will, will change. And as they change, we need to really address it. So everybody should be tested. But even if you're not tested, you cannot be hurt by taking five grams of modified citrus pectin. Now, here is a big point. You may be feeling great, and you do the test, and it comes up at 16. And you get the results from a big lab, and it says under 17.8 normal. No, no, no. It's normal because under 17.8 is normal for these very advanced progressive heart failure patients who 12.5% will die if they are low on galactin-3 in one year and 36% will die if the galactin-3 is high. For the general population, if you are at 16, for example, your chances of dying compared to somebody in, in lower levels of galactin in the next 10 years are three to four fold. Your chances for getting aggressive cancer are much higher. You need to be on a different diet, on a lifestyle change, and on modified citrus pectin, even if you're feeling great, because you are walking with a time bomb. And now we can detect it, and we can address it.